Hi, this video is an overview of the vector data structure. Here we're going to introduce what a vector is and basically how it works. To keep these videos at a digestible length, we'll get into the details in some later videos. So remember that we do have the array data structure and it does work basically, but adding one element at a time is slow. It's quadratic time, which is unacceptable. The problem is that an array is fixed size. When you create an array, you're stuck with a certain size, and that's not flexible enough for certain use cases, like adding one element at a time. So a solution is a vector data structure, and a vector is a partially filled self-resizing array. So a vector is kind of a variation on an array. We're taking the basic array technology and adding to it. The partially filled idea means that We'll make an array that's probably bigger than we need and keep track of how many elements are in use. And that solves one problem. That's the flexibility problem. We still have the issue that that might fill up and that's the self resizing idea. The self resizing idea is that if that array got totally full and overflows because we have one more element we need to stick in there, what we do is allocate a new array at that moment and copy everything over. Now, this means there are two different words for two different concepts of the number of elements involved, and we have to keep these straight. It's a little bit of a detail. The size is the word we will use for the number of elements that are stored in the structure. Size is what the user of the vector sees. That's the number of elements they put in and the number of elements they expect to be stored safely. Capacity is a different number. It's the length of the backing array. The backing array is this array we're creating to hold elements. And the capacity could be different from the size. I said it's partially filled, so that means that we have enough capacity, enough elements to store everything. So we introduce this invariance or rule that the size has to be less than or equal to the capacity at all times. And that makes common sense. If you have a container, it needs to be bigger than the stuff you're storing or maybe the same size. You know, if you want to store a gallon of orange juice, you need a container that's one gallon or maybe bigger, two gallons, three gallons works, that's fine. But it can't be smaller, that won't work. So if I'm trying to store 100 elements, the capacity has to be greater than or equal to 100. Okay, so the self-resizing idea again is if we would violate this invariant, meaning if we add one more to size, adding one more element to the structure, and that would make size greater than capacity, then we don't just break. Instead, what we do is allocate a larger backing array, copy everything from the old array into the new one, and free the old array so there's no memory leak. Here are the high-level operations of the vector. We want to implement all of these efficiently. An industrial-grade implementation would have a lot more than this, but these are the ones we're going to focus on here because they're the major ones. So we need to be able to create an empty vector. That's the default constructor, create empty. We want to be able to get the size. That's just an accessor. It's pretty simple. We have get at index i. That's like an array subscript. Set index i to value x. That's like an assignment into an array subscript. Push back x adds x to the back of the vector. So x becomes the highest index of the vector. That increases the size by 1. That's a capability that arrays do not have. And pop back is kind of the opposite of push back. Pop back removes the last element. So whichever element is at the highest index is removed from the vector. And array does not have that either. We're using the C++ library terminology push to add to the back and, and pop to remove. So we're going to go through how these operations work. Let's start with the simplest, which are the default constructor. And the default constructor just initializes the vector to be empty. So what that does is it needs to initialize the capacity to be some known value. It's a bit of a design decision what the initial capacity should be. We're going to keep it simple and say the initial capacity is 1. So to begin with, we have an array of capacity 1. So we need to initialize some data members, create this array of size 1. That's it. The fill constructor is given a value of n and a value x and sets up the vector to have n copies of x. and to implement that, we'll just initialize just like an empty vector and then call the pushback operation n times. So we'll reuse that pushback function to do all the work. So that one ends up being pretty easy. Size is an accessor. So that's a one line kind of thing. Get at index i and set at index i. Those just use the backing array. Those are array subscripts. So those are pretty easy. The 
The thing that's complicated here is the pushback operation because it might have to do that resizing. So we're going to look at that next. And pop back is kind of just the opposite of pushback. Uh, for time, we're going to omit that and not go into the details, but it works very similar to push. OK, so more on pushback. Pushback is responsible for adding x to the back of the vector. So here's the algorithm at a high level. First, if the size is currently equal to the capacity resize, that means there's no room for x. So if the vector is currently full, make room for it. We call that resize. After this step one if statement finishes, we know for sure that size is less than capacity because there's two ways this could have happened. If we run this algorithm and size is equal to capacity to begin with, the resize operation increases the capacity and now size is less than capacity. Alternatively, if we went in and size was less than capacity, then we didn't do anything, but still size is less than capacity. So either way, after step one, we know size is strictly less than capacity. In other words, there is room for this element x. Then we just do array at index i equals x, just assign it. And size plus plus, we need to keep track of the fact that there's one more element. So not very complicated, aside from this resize operation. Now let's talk about that. So the resizing strategy is that to begin with, the capacity of our vector is 1. And when a resize is necessary, we double the capacity, meaning multiply it by 2. Therefore, the, if, if we're adding element after element, the capacities will be 1, and then double to 2, and then double to 4, and then double to 8. You may recognize these as the powers of 2. They continue on 16, 32, 64, and so on. There's a reason for this. It's not just kind of a random choice. The intuition is that when we're adding element after element, the resizes get more and more spaced out. So look at how much of a rest we have between resizes. The first time, we have to immediately resize to two. But then if I'm adding, 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 I get to add the third one. I don't have to resize, but then the fourth one I do. And then after the fourth one, I get uh, five, six, seven, eight. So I get four pushbacks before I have to do a resize. Then I get a rest of 8, then a rest of 16. So those rest periods where I can add an element without needing to do a resize get more and more spaced out as the size gets greater. Finally, let's just look at an example to sketch how this works and understand it. So to begin with, I've got an empty vector. So its size is 0, its capacity is 1. My array pointer is pointing at an array with one uninitialized element in it. If I add 7, then the size becomes 1, the capacity is still 1. Now this one array element holds the value 7. Next, I'm going to add 3. So adding 3 to begin with, starting from this state, causes a resize because size is equal to capacity. There's no room for another element. So we're going to double the capacity to 2. So now I have a 2 element array. The 7 gets copied over. And then the 3 takes index number 1 there. So. That worked. Now let's add a 4. OK, so adding a 4 will trigger another resize because we're full. So the capacity gets doubled from 2 to 4. So now we're, we've got a larger array. It's got enough space for the 4. And the 4 gets assigned, and we're done. Now let's add an 8. This is one of these rest period adds where we don't need to do a resize finally. So size gets incremented to 4. The 8 gets put at the last index, and we're done. Let's add one more element, 5. This is going to trigger another resize. We're going to double the capacity from 4 all the way to 8. So you can see this is starting to get pretty big. And 5 will go in the last uh, spot there, and we're done.